It was 1986, and I wanted to look like Madonna. What do you want to be for Halloween, Suzanne? My brothers and sisters would ask. I want to be Madonna. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah right, more like Michael Jackson. I think my mom dressed me up like a tomato that year. I was six years old, the smallest kid in kindergarten. I was painfully skinny, a deep dark tan from playing outside, and a head of short, thin, black hair. My hair had never grown past that baby fine stage. It was just short, like boy short. My mom would scotch tape bows to my head <laughs> because the fine teeth of a barrette would just slide through my non-existent hair. I was forced to wear dresses, so there was no mistake. I was a girl. I was skinny with a huge round tummy. I looked like a big toddler, still fitting into the clothes I had worn when I was three. I probably weighed about 30 pounds. As a small kid, my weight and hair pained my mom. Other mothers would criticize her for not feeding me enough. Ow, she's so skinny. How old is she? At dinner, I was forced to drink an entire glass of vitamin D milk and not allowed to speak during any meals until my plate was cleaned. Less talking, more eating. My brothers and sisters teased me, saying I look like an old Chinese man. They used to dress me up in thick prescription glasses, drawing mustaches on me and taking photos. I was also the milkman's kid, the mailman's kid, basically unwanted and left on a doorstep, not at all related to them. I did not look like Madonna. I remember seeing the pretty girls in my class being chased by the boys, squealing, long blonde pigtails waving, gasping out of breath. My best friend at the time was an equally small Japanese boy named Roy. We looked like twin brothers. <laughs> Being the only two Asian kids in our class, we bonded. We were the smartest kids, because, you know, Asians. <laughs> we would swing by ourselves while the other kids played tag. This was the 80s. Hair was king, big, teased into submission, blonde hair with thick black roots. That was the coolest. Twisted Sister, The Go-Go's, Motley fucking crew. MTV told me what was what. My sisters had the hair. Their tresses were obnoxiously gorgeous. Even my brothers had feathered hair. Our house bought stock in Aquanet. The blow dryer was always on. I couldn't even pretend to participate in this hair extravaganza. Even Sally Struthers mocked me with her Feed the Children campaign. Her hair was blonde, huge, and curly, while my hair was barely fed, malnourished. I think a normal six-year-old would not be aware of this superficial bullshit but my mom's constant reminder that I was too skinny and gawky looking made it painfully obvious. Oh, you have your daddy nose, it's so big. We fix it when you're older. <laughs> Every kid has the hopes of plastic surgery. I was so fucked up that I actually bragged about my future nose job. Oh, why won't your hair grow? You look like a boy but I have this dress on and a bow tape to my head. Aren't I pretty and dainty? <laughs> Finally, my mom came up with a solution. She had started washing hair at a friend's salon and become quite the amateur hairdresser. We'd all get our trims in the kitchen, sitting in a chair with a towel around our neck, hair dripping wet. We'd all get crooked-ass haircuts. <laughs> she once sliced my brother's ear with her dull scissors. Ma, you're never cutting my hair again, he screamed. I was a little more trusting. One, because I didn't have that much to work with. And two, because I was six. She came home excited one day. Oh, baby, we're going to make you so pretty. Your hair going to be so thick. She took out mystery boxes and rollers from a plastic shopping bag. She had learned something new at work today. My mom learned how to do perms. 
I think there was something about the 80s where it was perfectly acceptable to poison your children. I mean, no one breastfed anymore. Formula was king. Remember Crystal Pepsi? Tab? Lean Cuisine? Cocaine? I even think the McRib was invented in the 80s. And in my mom's eyes, it was completely okay to pour a chemical shitstorm on your six-year-old daughter's head. I was excited. I was going to have thick, beautiful hair. I helped my mom by handing her rollers and little pieces of tissue. She wrapped my tiny strands tightly around each roller, pulling a rubber band clip to hold it in place. She worked row by row until my head was covered in tight, tiny plastic rollers. The next step involved a container of foul-smelling liquid. My mom combined two bottles into one and shook it vigorously. She squinted while reading the directions. Her eyes in English have always been bad. <laughs> but still I trusted her. She mumbled under her breath. She began squirting opaque concoction on each little roller. It burned the eyes. It filled our kitchen with a pungent smell that refused to leave no matter how many windows we opened. One thing my mom didn't tell me, perms hurt. My hair was pulled way too tight and the solution burned my scalp. I sat fidgeting, wanting to itch my poor little head, but I didn't complain. I was gonna look like Madonna. The process lasted well past my bedtime. My mom yawned and rinsed my hair out in the kitchen sink. Plastic perm rod dinged against the aluminum. My scalp finally felt relief as the cool water washed away that wretched yet magic solution. After drying my hair, my mom pulled back the towel. Her expression was not encouraging. <laughs> how, how does it look? It needs to dry, it's too late. You kept me up, you have school tomorrow, you go to bed, she said angrily and poof, she was gone. I couldn't wait to show off my new thick wavy hair to all the girls at school. I was the one who'd be chased. I would be hot stuff. I'd run that sandbox with Roy at my side. I went to bed, smelly water absorbing into my pillow. The next morning I jolted up. I was gonna be so pretty. I ran to the bathroom and learned the true definition of crestfallen. What hair I did have was wound up in tight little two-inch curls all around my head. Once was once short, straight hair was now even shorter, curly hair. <laughs> I had a tiny little smelly afro. <laughs> I panicked. I grabbed a brush. I started trying to straighten it. This did not help. Instead, it just turned into a pile of fuzz. I started crying. My mom did not like my ungrateful little attitude. I stay up late for you, you look fine. Your hair way thicker than before. This is style now, get dressed. I pulled on clothes and walked alone to kindergarten because in the 80s, that was okay. I want to say no one noticed. I want to say I left that day unscathed. Nope. What happened to your hair? <laughs> you look silly. You smell funny. Of course, Roy was the only one that didn't care. He noticed, but didn't care. Now we just look like two Asian boys playing away from the other kids. One just had a sweet afro. I looked this way for months. I also had lost a few of my front teeth at the time, so I was supremely awesome. <laughs> my brothers and sisters now joke that I was adopted from Aborigines. <laughs> my mom to this day insists it was a good idea and that she is a fabulous hairdresser. But that bob cut she gave me a few years later and that second perm she gave me in middle school leave me questioning her talents. I'll chalk it up to the many fashion mistakes we all made in the 80s. Scratch.
scrunchy socks and jelly shoes. I just got a way earlier start. And I have still not learned any hair lessons. As soon as I was old enough, I bleached the shit out of my hair and ended up looking nothing like Madonna. Suzanne Hoyam! <laughs>